Folks, this uh, story is one that I'm doing because it's close to my heart. Uh, if you didn't know it, I'm obviously a black guy. I don't know if it's obvious, but I'm a black guy. But that being said, I have a special affinity for Jewish delis. When I was young, and I'm talking about uh, five years up to, how old was I? Um, I think I was 17. Yeah, 17, living in the Bronx. I, <coughs> excuse me, knew of one uh, Jewish deli, okay? And that Jewish deli closed down when I was about 13. 13, I was 13, so for eight years, the only Jewish uh, deli that I knew of was Mr. Bunsen's Jewish Delicatessen. Mr. Bunsen was a uh, German Jew who had escaped uh, to America, he and his family, from obviously Germany. Mr. Bunsen opened up a delicatessen before I was born. And that delicatessen was located between 182nd Street and 183rd Street on Webster Avenue in the Bronx. Mr. Bunsen's Deli was known throughout the entire area, anywhere from Tremont Avenue and Fordham Road and uh, the Grand Concourse and Third Avenue. Now that is a very large geographic area. And there were a few other Jewish delicatessens that were located in the general vicinity, several of which were on uh, Fordham Road uh, near Jerome Avenue. And don't get me wrong, uh, they were pretty good, but everybody and his brother went to Mr. Bunsen's Jewish Delicatessen. Mr. Bunsen's Delicatessen had the best pastrami sandwiches, corned beef sandwiches, meats. He would have a special menu every day. His sausage meatball sandwiches okay, were to die for. Mr. Bunsen also recognized his clientele, and on Friday, he made lasagna, a meatless lasagna, for all of the Catholic people uh, that lived in the area that, back in those days, uh, could not eat meat on Fridays. Mr. Bunsen had such a large clientele that if you didn't place your order for his specialty items of the day before 10 o'clock, you weren't getting any, okay? And especially on Friday, you weren't getting any. Now, Fridays he made two specialty items. He made spaghetti with meats, with, without meat sauce, okay? But that spaghetti was so goddamn good. Yeah, I'm just salivating just thinking about it. And as I stated, he also made a lasagna. In order for you to get those types of specialty items, I stated again, you had to place your order in by 10 o'clock because they were all cooked from scratch every last one of them. Now, you could order a giant pan, you know those aluminum pans, those giant aluminum pans that we have? You could order a pan of that, and the prices were absolutely reasonable. They were reasonable. Unfortunately, Mr. Bunsen um, had a niece, and he had uh, one son. Um, and they decided that they 
didn't want to continue the, the delicatessen. Mr. Bunsen, when he finally retired, and he was getting senile, don't get me wrong, he, he really was losing it. His wife was still in pretty good shape, but he was losing it. And uh, they, I guess, jointly decided that, you know, enough was enough. And they sold the delicatessen out to some Hispanic people. And when the Hispanic people took over, uh, I don't believe that uh, the uh, delicatessen restaurant, that's what it was. Well, it was a delicatessen. It wasn't a restaurant. There was no seating. Um, they didn't last two years. And you absolutely, the very first day that they took over, you absolutely could tell the difference. I said all that because I was just informed that Carnegie's Delicatessen, located at 55th Street and 7th Avenue, is closing today. Now, when I moved to uh, Manhattan um, when I was 17, um, I obviously had not a lot of experience in Manhattan as far as living there, so I had to find my way as far as food and various other things were concerned. Now, Manhattan has a ton, a ton of great restaurants, okay? Um, I had a couple that were um, located really uh, close to me um, when I lived on uh, Second Avenue. Um, one of them was a uh, Spanish restaurant and they specialized in their paellas. And again, same situation. You really had to get your orders in early if you want to uh, have any of their specialty dishes uh, for lunch. And the menu was the same every day. They also had a restaurant that specialized uh, in uh, Southern foods. And again, um, that restaurant with the initial owners was very good for whatever reason. I don't know if it's financial or whatever. It changed hands. And once it changed hands, you know, it went downhill pretty fast. But when I came across Carnegie's, I knew that I had found a home as far as a Jewish deli was concerned. Now, this place is closing, and I'm assuming that the owner uh, is selling out to people who are going to end up uh, raising the, that entire uh, cor uh, area and putting up condos, which is a damn shame. Now, there, there's some other uh, delicatessens uh, that are in uh, Manhattan. You got uh, Katz's, um, you have Second Avenues. There, there's a couple of them, but this one, uh, as far as I am concerned, was the best of the best. Those pastrami corned beef sandwiches were to die for. Now, were they as good as Mr. Bunsen's? No, but damn near nothing is as good today as it was back then in the day. But this one was pretty close. With the passing of this particular Jewish uh, delicatessen, which was one of my favorites, there's only one other Jewish delicatessen that I know of, and again, I don't know about all the Jewish delis, but of the Jewish delicatessens that I know of, there basically are two uh, that I would go to for a solid corned beef pastrami sandwich with Russian dressing, sauerkraut. Number one is this one. Langer's Deli. Langer's Deli is on the corner of Alvarado and 7th Street. Now, this particular deli has been there, again, since the year of the flood. And the an original owner, I forget his first name, obviously his last name is Langers. This guy had been there for a long time. Fortunately, fortunately, his daughter and uh, progeny uh, took over the business and the business is thriving and every time I go back to LA I make sure that I have blocked in a specific amount of time to go to Langer's and get my 
corned beef pastrami sandwich on rye and I also get a pastrami sandwich on rye with obviously uh, deli mustard the old pickles and uh, some fries I always eat the fries on the way back home I save the uh, sandwich for a little later in the day obviously Langer sandwiches cannot all be eaten in their entireties so I'll split the sandwich I'll get part of it at the one point in a day and then later on I'll go back and get the rest of it but Langer's is the best now in LA in second place is Cantor's Deli now Cantor's Deli which uh, you're seeing a picture of the inside panoramic view Cantor's Deli is located on 4th and Fairfax now Cantor's Deli does rival Langer's Deli as far as the deliciousness of its food the only problem I have with Cantor's Deli is that they don't have real New York cheesecake and for those New Yorkers you know what I'm talking about but for everything else they are right there pretty much with Langer's and the good thing about Cantor's Deli is that they are open you know till like 2 o'clock in the morning whereas Langer's normally shuts down at uh, 4 o'clock in the uh, afternoon uh, because they uh, obs observe uh, the uh, uh, end of the day the shutdown of the day and they observe all of the Sabbath holidays as does uh, 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 Cantor's but oh man Langer's Deli Cantor's when you're talking about a real pastrami sandwich a real corned beef sandwich uh, you got your bagels and lox you got all of the goodies so in my mind food is not just food food is an experience and if you are able you damn sure need to experience Langer's Deli and Cantor's unfortunately with the shutdown today of Carnegie's uh, we're going to be a little poorer for our experience as far as getting really great Jewish delicatessen food Carnegie you are great in your time you're great today and you will be sorely missed